Hi, I'm Jerry Pezo with Taylor Creek Fly Shops. I'm a guide here. Um, I've been guiding here about 25 years on and off um, and fly fishing here in the Roaring Fork Valley uh, since I was 16, um, 1978. Um, today we're going to talk about the betas hatch, uh, the entomology of it, uh, fly selection, and a little bit about presentation. Blue wing olive of the betas, it's, it's a mayfly. Um, you know, the nymphs uh, born from an egg live in the river. Um, when it's time for them to become adults, they'll crawl out from underneath the rock, the nymphs, um, swim toward the surface, kick their bodies off, dry their wings, fly away as a winged adult, mate, lay eggs, and die all in 24 hours in their adult stage. So we have like a little joke, you know, about the mayfly hatch. We always say, what did the male mayfly say to the female mayfly? The male mayfly says, what do you mean, not tonight? Probably lame. It's only four hours. What do you mean, not tonight? Yeah, nobody got that. You guys are all working. <laughs> <laughs> so if they didn't get it, no one else is going to get it. That's where we start again. The, the nymphs, they're, they're living under the, you know, under the water, you know, under the rock, um, crawling around. Uh, when it's time for them to hatch, they'll, a lot of times they'll, they'll try to crawl along the bottom and get closer to the bank where it's shallower, where they have less distance to um, cover to get to the surface. Other times, um, you know, a lot of them won't, you know, do that, do that migration. They'll just swim right to the surface. So usually a lot of times you can see the fish move out of the middle of the river, you know, in anticipation of that hatch. And they're, you know, they're, they're seeing those nymphs starting that migration and they can sense it and they move into in, in, to try to get the best feeding spot in preparation for that the emergence, um, you know, uh, to feed on the emergence when it occurs. They'll start by, you know, feeding um, on the loose nymphs that get, get washed away as they migrate. And then they'll, they'll change their focus, you know, onto the emergers as the hatch progresses throughout the day, you know, a couple hours sometimes. Um, and then um, at some point, they'll start to really feed on those emergers closer to the surface. Um, some of the, the, the females, they lay the eggs, they'll just drop them over the water. Some will go into the water. Um, some will go and lay their eggs on the bottom on a rock. After that, you know, they're, they're gonna die you know, within that 24 hour period. And you know, at the, at the end of their life cycle, we give them a different name. They're called a spinner and their bodies are elongated and the color changes more of a rust color. Um, and that's and when they're falling on the water, that's called the spinner fall. Sometimes we fish the spinner fall, specific dry flies that look like the dying um, stage of the betas. Other times we just fish the dry on the surface. Other times we fish uh, cripples or, or um, emergers on the surface. We fish nymphs and emergers below the surface. Generally, we're fishing our emerging blue wing olive uh, nymphs uh, closer to the surface and more of our nymphs down deep. But during a hatch, um, you can fish, you know, emergers down deep and emergers are the way to go. Most of the time we catch most of our fish on emergers um, and they can be fished, like I said, at the bottom of the water column, mid, right below the surface and as a dry. When you fish a um, uh, an emerger as a dry, you're kind of imitating a, a, a crippled blue wing olive that's having difficulty getting out of its out of its out of its shuck or body. Um, adults on the surface, they will focus their feeding on the surface, uh, feeding on the on the adults in the you know what we call a dry fly uh, presentation. Usually, fishing nymphs first and then emergers. Uh, but a lot of times you can just go to emergers right away. So we've got, you know, our juju betas right here, which are awesome emerger patterns. Um, I usually like to tie uh, two or three on uh, in line. This mercury betas here, uh, Pat Dorsey's pattern is also a wonderful pattern. And then the Darth betas, um, which, you know, it's, it's got a little flash to it, you know, if the water is off color or if it's real dark out, that's, that can probably be a 
really good pattern. But my favorite right here, the Barza Merger, hands down. Um, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful pattern. Tends to work uh, just about everywhere you go. Um, you know, and, and traditionally, you know, we're, we're looking at, um, um, you know, gray and olive patterns um, at the beginning of the hatch and later in the hatch, you know, for, for mergers, you know, uh, a little browner is, is, is okay. Uh, their body colors change throughout the hatch. Uh, the, the insects that in, during the hatch that are, betas that are hatching later in the hatch will generally be a little browner. This buy it Mayfly Emerger here, it's a wonderful pattern. It can be used just below the surface or on the surface. The bat wing, fantastic um, dry fly. It floats real well. It's got a little CDC. The low water betas, got a little CDC as well. Floats real well. The Iwani done, if, you, if, it's, if it's dark and you're having difficulty seeing your fly, this is the one to go to. So we want to talk about flies that are specific to the frying pan river that we like to use here. Um, first one right off the bat is this frying pan emerger uh, tied by a, a, a famous local fly fisherman named Roy Palm created this fly. And we've been fishing it in this area, I don't know, maybe 40 years. Um, that's one of our favorite patterns. We fish it as an emerger deep. Uh, mid column, near the surface, on the surface as a dry, as a cripple. Uh, that's one of our favorites. Uh, for, for a nymph or an emerger, uh, the micro may is absolutely uh, a guide's choice here at, at Taylor Creek. Um, and then, you know, you can stick with your uh, traditional old school attractor, uh, just, a, just a standard pheasant tail. There's so many mayflies in the frying pan river that uh, pheasant tail always works um, because you know it's a, it's it, it represents um, every mayfly uh, nymph in in that size pretty much. We've got our standard um, RS2. This is Sparkle Wing in black. Uh, very good morning searching pattern on the frying pan. Our no hackle blue wing olive. You know these are wonderful patterns. They float really well. I understand it floats like a cork. The materials that are used in the wing allows the wing to just move a tiny, tiny bit with with, with a little bit of current uh, or wind, uh, making it uh, very life lifelike. Most of our insects on the frying pan river are smaller than other rivers. So it's an extremely technical river, it requires perfect presentation. And because we have to fish smaller dry flies, the presentation is even harder. Um, you know, what makes us experts at Taylor Creek is our understanding of the hatches um, and matching the hatch and then proper presentation. So we're Taylor Creek Fly Shop here on the banks of the Frying Pan River in Basalt, Colorado. Uh, we have flies in, for every insect in the area and every stage. and many, many different patterns, sizes, and colors. Our guide staff is large and experienced. We look forward to taking you fishing. Thanks for watching. We have another video on how to rig for the frying pan coming up.